Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of CSGO Investing. My name is Nalo and today's video is going to be a knife investing guide. Now I really like the idea of knife investing because it actually does work pretty well unlike gloves. Gloves don't really go up too much in value over time. They actually tend to kind of go down but knives are really cool because they do go up in value and that's a pretty interesting concept for something that is a gold item in the game that shares that unique property and it's pretty interesting to go into this all so we're gonna go ahead and make a video on it. Also, somebody has been requesting this video many, many times over my past few videos here, so I definitely thought that I would accommodate that request, and I do think that knives are a pretty good investment going forward here, so let's start talking about it. Sponsor for today's video is SkinWallet.com. They're a pretty new marketplace, and they have a lot of items that you can buy for much cheaper than you would on the same community markets. If you wanna go ahead and check them out, there's a lot of great features that their site has. I really like the UI design, and they have a very solid support team, and a very good trust factor rating, and of course, lots of skins for you to buy. So if you want to go ahead and check them out, use the link in the description below. Thanks, let's get started. So I did make this video one time in the past about knife investments, and while it did do really good, there's not really going to be a whole lot of new information in this video because it's basically the same sort of concept. There's not really anything new to add to the table that I didn't talk about in the last video. However, if you didn't see the last video, then this is going to be new information about knife investments, so stick around for that. So there is one new thing I wanted to talk about though in this video that I didn't talk about in the last knife investing video, and that's specifically a section about Doppler skins. So Doppler have been pretty interesting because they specifically have seen very large rises independent of the rest of the knife market. So for example, a lot of the emerald and sapphire and ruby dopplers really shot up in price even though the rest of the knife market was fairly stale at the time. There was also a lot of increases on phase 2 and phase 4 doppler skins because those are the more desirable phases. So dopplers bring a pretty interesting thing to the overall knife market and that's the fact that they can independently rise from the rest of the knife market. The doppler skins have an interesting draw to them that allows allows them to see large spikes in price while the rest of the knife market is fairly stale. And because of that, there is a lot of options for you to go into Doppler knives if you want to go ahead and get something that has a good long-term future that isn't going to really slow down with the rest of the knife market if it does at some point. Now the independent rises that Doppler knives see is due to two main factors. The first one of course is the desirability of Doppler knives in the first place, they're just seen as a high class item. But the second one is the fact that Dopplers are just a lot harder to get, especially in their gem forms. Dopplers are going to be a much more rare knife and they're therefore are going to be a lot more rare when it comes to buying off of the normal knife market. Like I said before, if you aren't going to shell out for a gem knife, I would definitely stick with a phase 2 or a phase 4 Doppler because those ones are going to be more desirable than the phase 1s and the phase 3s. Now black pearl Dopplers are also a very interesting concept because while they are a lot more rare than the other gem knives, black pearls aren't going to be as high priced because they aren't as desirable as the other gem knives are. Now interestingly enough, black pearl knives actually see a pretty independent rise as well, even among Doppler gems, so even when you have like ruby, sapphire, and emeralds going up in price, black pearls actually seem to be independent even of that and go up in their own sort of way. This is probably due to a combination of the fact that they aren't as desirable as the gem knives and of course the fact that they're more rare. Now I wanted to talk about this Doppler thing because it was interesting that it was independent from the rest of the knife markets, but now we're going to talk about the rest of the knife market itself in a more general sense. Now there's actually some just basic rules that you're going to want to follow when you're trying to pick out a knife to invest into in the overall knife market. And the first one is of course going to be how old the knife skin actually is. So for example, if you have like a Huntsman Fade versus a Huntsman Tiger Tooth, Tiger Tooth is a more new finish and is going to be able to be found in newer, lower cost cases than the Huntsman Fate is, for example. Therefore, the obtainability of the Huntsman Tiger Tooth is a lot higher, and so therefore the Huntsman Fate is going to be a stronger investment because it's a little bit harder to get. Now, that's not to say that the Huntsman Tiger Tooth is a bad investment when compared to the Huntsman Fade. In some cases, the Huntsman Tiger Tooth could rise more than the Huntsman Fade does over the course of a month or a week or whatever, and that's mostly because a lot of this is based off of desirability rather than quantity. However, history speaks for itself, and the older knife finishes are the ones that tend to do better over the course of a longer period of time. Now, as an example of an old knife finish that's pretty hard to get because all of the cases are fairly expensive, we have the Karamit Fade. Now the Karamit Fade is obviously a very iconic knife, and when I first got it for $800 in the first knife investment video, it was worth around $1,200 at that time. So at the point that I made that first knife investment video, I had made around $400 on my Karamit Fade. But right now they're worth around $2,000, so I had actually now made around $1,000 off of it, which is really nice. Now that kind of goes to show that knives are a more long-term thing that you're going to want to buy into and sort of sit on for a while because they are going to be lower risk. 
risk. Now we are sort of in a bull market right now and a lot of knives have increased quite a lot in price. On my Karambit Fade and my Butterfly Tiger Tooth, I have made about 2,000 RMB respectively, which is about $300 per knife. So even though we are in a bull market, knives are going to be seeing some love anyway as well, even though a lot of this is probably due to manipulation and some other smaller factors. Now knives, however, overall in a longer term sense are going to be a pretty solid lower risk investment, but there are going to be better things for you to buy into short term. So if you're not looking to buy something for a longer period of time that has lower risk and you're looking for a more short term investment, then knives probably aren't the right thing for you. As sort of an overall strategy to sort of counterbalance the fact these are longer term lower risk investments, I would recommend buying maybe one or two lower tier fade knives or something that's an older finish and just kind of sitting on those because they'll possibly be able to counterbalance some losses in a portfolio that has more short term and midterm investment. So essentially think of knives as a counterweight to some losses that you might see because they are going to be lower risk and a more long term slow incline in price. Once again, knives with older skin finishes that come from a lot older cases are going to be a better idea because they're going to be less obtainable and still going to have that same desirability factor as some of the other more flashy knives. As a slightly cheaper recommendation, I would recommend the Huntsman Fade. It is going to be able to be bought in a nice factory new condition for not too terribly expensive. It is still obviously very expensive in a general sense. When it comes to CSGO skins and knives especially, it's a little bit on the cheaper end, and it's going to come from only the Huntsman case, which means it's very hard to obtain in terms of how you can actually set out to get a Huntsman fade. And while it isn't the most desirable knife model, it is a very desirable knife finish, so it does sort of counterbalance that fact. And as you can see here on the graph, it has had a pretty solid long-term rise in price. And if you're able to shell out a lot of money to buy a very, very good knife, I would recommend the Butterfly Knife Fade. Obviously, the Butterfly Knife is probably the most desirable knife model in the game right now, and the Fade Skin is a very desirable finish, probably one of the top three at least. So this is going to be a very solid knife, and as you can see by the graph, of course, it did, of course, rocket up in price while Butterfly Knives were becoming very popular, and it was actually able to go off of the Steam Market listings because it got so expensive. Butterfly Knife Fades are going to be good for a multitude of reasons. I would honestly say it's probably the most optimal knife investment that you can possibly make. It's going to be a pioneer knife as well, which means when this one goes up in price, the rest of the knife market will probably also follow it, which means it's probably going to rise first and it's also going to rise the most. Also, don't be afraid to take into account your own personal opinion when it comes to picking out a knife that you want to invest into. Obviously, knives being plate skins is also a big draw of them. So if you want to go ahead and invest in something that you personally like a lot more, you're not really going to see too much of a drawback unless you're picking an extremely new knife like the skeleton knives or the talon knives. Anyway, that's about all there is to say buy an older knife with a desirable finish and kind of stay away from the newer knives that are available in a lot of the newer, less expensive cases because the less obtainable a knife is going to be, the stronger it's going to be as a longer term investment. One quick side note though is that sometimes the demand of these knives is able to counterbalance how many cases they're available in. As you can see, the Kermit Fade is available in quite a lot of cases, but it still has a very high price and a very solid graph because it's a very desirable knife in general. Anyway, that's about all I have to say for this. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this and hopefully this knife investment guide is going to be valid for quite some time now. Again, stay away from the newer knives and you're not going to get burned with this. It's a pretty solid lower risk thing that you can go into. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to check out my Discord, my Twitter, and also skin wallet below. And of course, be sure to check out that like button and that subscribe button because that's going to be able to get you to access the best investment tips anywhere else on YouTube. Thanks for watching guys. See you guys next time. Peace.